Well, welcome to Tell Me Tie. Today, I'm super excited. I've got Terry Ryder, CEO of Hot Spotting here, general property guru. He's written four books. He was an ex AFR property editor, and he's a property mentor. Welcome to Tell Me Tie, Terry. Welcome um, to you. Um, welcome to the conversation. It's always good to talk to you about anything, but particularly about real estate. <laughs> now, Terry, you and I have done many webinars and podcasts over the years, um, but I've got a new concept podcast for us. Two grumpy old men talking about property shit. How do you think that would go, Terry? Look, I can't think of anything more entertaining and informative than that. <laughs> very good, very good. Now, Terry, I get grumpy when people of our vintage say things like, oh, when I was 20, you know, it was hard, uh, interest rates were at 7 percent But I've just done the maths, right? In 1989, the, prop- the median price of property was $175,000. And the average wage was about $25,000, so about six times, six and a half times earning. Today in Sydney, it's $1.6 million, and the average wage is about $80,000, so about two, uh, 20 times earning. But it gets worse. Back in 1989, stamp duty was 3.5% of the purchase price. Today, it's about 5.5% in Sydney. Terry, how do we get in this mess? Um, 10 or more years of bad policy by politicians. I mean... The people who stand up in front of the cameras and say they're really, really concerned about housing affordability and young people's ability to get into housing are the people who have created the problem. I know they've increased the cost of new housing massively. Did you know it costs almost half a million dollars to build the average new home? And so that's just that the housing cost doesn't include the land cost. Mm -hmm. It's it's increased 53% in the last three years, and that's, that's through primarily through um, government policies, you know, changing the regulations to make things safer or more environmentally friendly or whatever the reason. Um, they keep changing the rules, adds to the cost of housing, um, makes um, investor property ownership more and more onerous, so more and more people are dropping out. Mm-hmm. And, and that kind of explains why we have a shortage of everything in real estate right now. We've got a shortage of rental properties. It's a, a crisis. We're not building enough new homes because it's too expensive and we've got shortages of everything that goes into building new homes and we've got a shortage of properties available for sale. So when you've got high demand as we have right now and um, shortages of everything that matters, that's a recipe for increasing uh, prices and rents. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at the ABS stats for the amount of dwelling commencements, not approvals, commencements, which is probably more important. In March of 2021, it was about 20000 for the month. Today, last month, it was 12,000, so it's actually nearly half. So I don't think it's going to get any better. Yeah. Well, the figures from organisations like the Housing Industry Association indicate that our current level of production of uh, new dwellings, approvals and commencements is um, the lowest in, I think, 12 years. Now, this is happening at a time where the federal government says we're going to be building a new housing at record levels. We've never built 1.2 million new homes in a five-year period ever in the history of the nation. Well, they want to do it now at a time when builders are going broke every day, and I do mean every day. Um, the cost escalations mean to you can't build homes affordably, a shortages of material, shortage of tradespeople, the big infrastructure, the big headline grabbing infrastructure projects that governments have announced are sucking all the tradespeople out of the home building industry. So we've got all these problems in an industry mm. which cannot possibly meet that target of $1.2 million new homes. Up. And may, maybe I'll do half that in the next five years, but they're certainly not going to go close to the, the target. It was just a press conference opportunity by by politicians. Um, and I often think that the, the source of so many of our problems in Australia is they never think beyond the press conference. Mm-hmm. I had a meeting with a major developer in Sydney the other week, and he said to me, he said, if you think we've got a housing problem now, you wait six months. Because they're, they're literally not tendering on jobs. They know that the builders are got well, the, the trade is they're, they've been squashed, right? So he's just sort of wait for six months. Hopefully the building costs will come down, but he can't start. I know many developers just are going out of the industry because it's too hard to work. Yeah. Well, I know a developer who has been um, one of the major developers in Queensland for decades. Um, he's been in the industry since the 1980s and he's been very successful. Um, but his, his very big company would typically build high-rise apartment buildings, saying, look, we, we cannot, because of the way the num- numbers stack up, the cost escalations, etc., we cannot build a project now unless we can sell the apartments for more than a million dollars each. So it's got to be um, prime location, 
top quality luxury apartments. Nothing else stacks up financially for developers like that. And one of the problems with that is that you need pre-approval or pre, pre-sales to get the development funded, right? Because banks generally want you to have, so the big four anyway, generally want you to have a num- number of pre-sales. And, you know, if you can't get it, those pre-sales, um, they just can't get off the ground. Yeah, well, that's another example of the, the really bad governance that's caused this problem. About uh, five, six years ago, they decided to, they to pretended to address the affordability issue by squashing foreign investors. They had an inquiry and decided to, to scapegoat foreign investors to causing bad affordability. So they, they didn't ban foreign investment. They just slugged them with all these new and increased taxes. Mm. And that sort of wiped out foreign investment in Australian real estate. Now, just in the last month or so, that have announced further increases in taxes on foreign investors. Now, foreign investors buying off-the-plan apartments is one of the the, the things we need to happen so builders can get their pre-approvals and get finance. Mm. Wiping out foreign investors is one of the reasons we have a shortage of, of dwellings in Australia at the moment, and in particular why we have a shortage of uh, rental properties, because it was politically convenient to scapegoat foreign investors who were never the problem. Um, they were actually part of the solution. Mm. Um, I've wiped them out, to the, and it's, it just added to this problem, this accumulation of policies, um, APRAs, changes to, to lending rules, etc. They've all accumulated over the last five, ten years to a situation where we have this massive shortage of everything and there's no easy fix to it. 